Welcome to a very special episode of KB Talks powered by the NKBA. Today we're going to take a break from our regularly scheduled programming to get to know my new co-host, the one and only Carl Champley. If you don't already know Carl, you're about to. And if you do know Carl, well, you can just enjoy the soothing sound of his voice for the next few minutes. But first, here's a quick word from this episode's sponsor. Monogram is more than luxury appliances. Monogram is the experience. We are inspired by life and the way you live. With high style, superior craftsmanship, and award-winning technology, our products raise the bar on what's possible in your kitchen designs. Our industry-leading induction cooktops, connected ovens, custom panel refrigerators, Advantium speed cooking ovens, and premium dishwashers blend seamlessly into your dream kitchen projects. Whether for yourself or your clients, Monogram helps you push the boundaries of gourmet style and create a kitchen fit for a chef. We are back and we are joined by the newest addition to our KB Talks podcast family, Carl Champley. Welcome, Carl. Jennifer, what a pleasure. (laughs) You and I know each other really well, but if someone doesn't know you, what's your elevator speech to introduce yourself? Oh my gosh, where do we start? I guess I'm a jack of all trades, a little bit like yourself, you know, been in the industry long enough to be dangerous. And um, gosh, where does where does one uh, begin? But hey, let me just start off by saying what a pleasure it is to be part of the um, this uh, podcast with this great association. I know, right? And here it's all about our industry and sharing the insights and knowledge. But for anyone who's going, where is that accent from? Go ahead, tell them where you're from and how you got started in this industry. Okay, well, the accents and and how the intro was, soothing voice. Really, Jennifer? (laughs) Well, I guess my accent from a little bit south of the United States. I'm from down under, originally from Australia. Uh, Let me see, I've um, I've been in the industry for Australia, 16 years in Australia, and, um, you know, more than that here in the US now. Moved here uh, 20 years ago. So uh, I guess I'm in Los Angeles, California. So I guess I'm classified now as an Angelino. And the question is, where did it all start? Well, it was a bright sunny day in a suburb of Sydney, Australia. No, it turns out my father was actually a professional street fighter in the underground circuit. And I'll never forget my mother sat me down and said, darling, I don't want you to follow the same footsteps as your father. So um, one thing that I did as an awkward kid was I would pull off the fence pickets and I was always building things. I was always on my all fours. I'm still that way today. And my mum could see that I had the talent, not so much at school, but as far as building things and, and designing things. And basically I jumped in as an apprentice carpenter And I always thought, what a great route to take because I can get that certificate, I can pursue other things, but I've always got that to fall back on. Well, I got into that. That's a four-year apprenticeship in Australia. Well, and explain how, like, you have to get certified to be a contractor in Australia. They take it very seriously. Oh, hell yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. It's uh, basically the only trade you can uh, become a contractor, a licensed builder, we call it in Australia, is it's the carpentry trade. Um, It's one of the great trades, plumbing, electrical, they're all fantastic, but the carpentry trade really gives you um, that pathway to become a licensed builder, which is terrific, because as you know, then you've got the mushroom effect and you can create a wonderful business. But it's four years as an apprenticeship, it's then either a five-year university degree full-time or it's three additional years after the apprenticeship, which is on the job during the day, and it's also training at college at night. And that's brutal because think about it. At that age, all I wanted to do was go out dancing and whatnot, and you've got to be devoted. So for three solid years, it's working. And I was like six, seven days a week and three nights a week from about 5 to about 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. And that then gave me my license as a contractor. And then to become a licensed home inspector, you have to do a minimum of 15 years on the job training, which to me makes a lot of sense because I've, I'm certified you know, home inspector over here, a little bit too busy in the design and construction field, but too many people can do an online course. And when you think that's their, that's their biggest asset is their home, 
And I can't quite understand how people can inspect a home not really understanding what's inside. So, well, and here's the thing. So, like, you also, though, can design as well because I have done a few chats with you out in the public, and you would show images of your work, and one of the kitchens that you got the most notoriety for was how you use every inch possible in a kitchen to utilize space. So, like, you're not just a contractor. Oh, well, thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> yeah, in, in Australia, after doing the apprenticeship and becoming a licensed contractor, um, I started, well, I spent a couple of years traveling around the world. Coming back, I started my own business. I then incorporated to construction and design, uh, mostly construction. But what happened was um, my wife and I, we were actually buying and selling places and we we're doing our own small developments. Now, in Sydney, Australia, real estate is super expensive. You know, to get a one-bedroom apartment without a garage, you need a million bucks, and that's back then. So space is key. So for us to actually go in there, we really had to design it cleverly, um, do a fantastic job, and that was the success and then selling something. And, and even back home, you know, like you look at 20, 25 years ago, people were very well educated and very much into the real estate market. So it had to be done perfectly or otherwise you weren't going to get your top dollar. So I think because of the space, we had to use every single square inch of space to make it worthwhile. And it's funny. And, uh, and the years later I come to the U S and I end up doing a show called wasted spaces. But because of a few projects I did in Australia, I did a, um, a beautiful uh, glass house in the botanical gardens. And I also did a, a wonderful waterfront property and I've never, never really been a trained designer, but I've always had the ability to see the end result. So I kind of build backwards and I've always taken the role of the designer as well. So touching on that, which you have done more in a lifetime than most will ever do, but thinking about that, what are some of the topics that you go, oh, Jen, I can't wait for us to talk about blah, blah. What would you say? That's a good question. I think, you know, I'm excited to be simply one of the voices of this uh, great association. And I'm not saying, I'm not here just to say how wonderful it is, but it's the NKBA, the National Kitchen Bath Association, is really terrific. I've seen over the years, 20 years, how supportive they are of the members, the, the waves they're making in the industry. And um, as, you know, we were both um, insiders, having that opportunity to travel around the world and share with people what the trends, what's going on in the global market. I think there's a lot... For, for us to share in regards to that. Uh, simply sharing the knowledge of the design construction industry over my lifetime, there's so many do's and don'ts. And I think a wonderful J-O-B that we have is to help America to make the right design choices. What do you think about that? I, I think that's awesome. <laughs> I think some make people make better choices than others, that's for sure. If I were to ask you, what is something that when you work with designers that you're like, oh, that's a concept that people should educate themselves on more. Obviously, it's a generalization and we'll say something and some designer listening to this will be like, hey, I know that. But like, mm -hmm. do you find that um, like, like, is it the concept of HVAC or, or what concepts do you find are things that maybe designers could spend more time getting to understand that would help the process more? Oh my gosh, that's uh, it's it's funny because I've got two um, two big projects in the sea at the moment. One's going back for revisions, and it's um, on one of them I'm working with the designer, the other one I'm designing. And just like you said, the HVAC design is crucial. There's a project I'll be starting in about four months. It's a it's a big one. It's about one point five million dollar um, uh, just a house renovation. Plus we're putting a new building on the property as well. But and we have a wonderful architect. Uh, in Westlake Village um, that's doing it, that's part of the team. But just what you said, HVAC, heating, venting and air conditioning, you know what's fascinating? These plans, I think it's about $65,000 for the uh, plan so far. It, I, I went in there and I took a look at it and it's like, okay, where's the returns? Where, you know, we've got two, two to three 14 inch ducts we need to go from the first floor to the second floor. Where are they going? And everyone just looked at themselves and I'm like, oh no. Please don't tell me that because there's only a couple of small support beam um, columns on the first floor and everyone's like, oh, okay. And she's like, don't you dare take my pantry. Anyway, the pantry's gone. So it, it, it's very much the bones of the project. It's, you know, are you upgrading to a 200, a 400 amp panel? 
how is that getting into the home? How's the HVAC getting into the home? So it's kind of fun having a full understanding as a contractor because at the end of the day, you know, everything's on my shoulders. And to work together with the designer, it's a real marriage because that design element has everything to do with the structural components of the property. Okay, Carl, anything else you're excited about in terms of this podcast? Because we are just so happy to have you. And honestly, I practiced my Australian accent and it did not sound good. So I shall not do it. How about we do an episode where I'll speak in an American accent and you speak in an Australian? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I feel like only you and I would find that funny. Oh gosh, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. But no, listen, I think it's just, um, it's an absolute pleasure to be on board with such a professional like yourself, Jennifer. And, I, and I'm not just saying that to be nice. Um, <laughs> with you and a lot of the other girls and guys I've met over the years, you're, you know, you're all very nice. And then I actually see the work that you do and I'm like, wow, okay. There's something about this association that it's like a magnet that brings this amazing talent to the table. And again, you know, we're in a world now that if we're doing a podcast and we've got these great designers out there, they, we need to give them real current and really good information because, you know, we're all out there. We've all got our businesses. We're doing the best we can. And I think this is a real valuable source because between you and I, with the experiences that we've got, with the travels that we've had, is to share these golden nuggets of information if, if there's one or two things that a listener can walk away with and go, you know what? I never thought about that. I think that's really valuable. And, and again, that's what I actually enjoy doing. And I know you do as well. Yeah, I agree. I think no fluff, just real authentic knowledge that can be shared because anyone listening to this and in, in our industry is so busy that it's very valuable time. So let's improve everyone's brain box and knowledge base. Well, Carl, thank you for the, taking the time from a job site to stop and chat. Um, all of you out there, as always, you can expect new KB Talks episodes powered by the NKBA coming up soon. Remember to send your feedback to nkba at flyingcamel.com. So give us some topics. You've heard Carl now. I bet your brains are going and going, oh, I've got a topic idea. So send that to nkba at flyingcamel.com. Also, it would mean so much if you could take the time to give KB Talks a star rating or review wherever you listen to podcasts. This will help us grow and reach even more listeners. Now stay tuned for a quick NKBA Minute. Hi, my name is Molly Barr and I'm a senior designer with Click Studios. I'm also a former NKBA 30 Under 30 with the 2014 program. You know, I never thought I'd know so many industry professionals across the nation and in Canada until I got the honor to be a part of this program. It has given me so much more than just a great resume booster, but a group of people that I can always bounce ideas off of and collaborate with. We just got together in Napa a couple weeks back and got to see some great new products by Signature Kitchen Suite and enjoy a bit of wine and network with some old friends and make some new ones. We're always a growing family. Besides, who doesn't like a bit of wine and sightseeing? So if you're committed to the kitchen and bath industry under 30 and looking to get more involved, I encourage you to consider the NKBA 30 Under 30 program. Visit nkba.org for more information.